I want to start with this picture here and then maybe you can just comment on what we are seeing here because I want to get into Tesla batteries, of course. And uh, yeah, the, the Blade batteries, are they structural? What's happening here? Maybe you can it, tell them. We audience. believe they are. This uh, great post from Luca, uh, who is the gigacasting guru, he is of the belief that the BYD Blade battery in Berlin is a structural battery. We haven't seen confirmation of that, but I don't see why it couldn't be or wouldn't be. We know how the structural batteries are made. All it requires really is a slightly different housing and uh, some polystyrene foam inside to make it structural. And all the pieces are there. Why wouldn't they be able to just begin doing this regardless of which battery type or supplier they're using, they could have a variety of structural battery packs. And the objective with the structural battery pack, of course, is to make it so that you don't have a redundant structure. If you look at the Ford Lightning, it has a big, heavy ladder <laughs> style frame. Oh, yeah. And then it also has a battery, which also has its own structure. That's yep. double the structure for no additional benefit. And so Tesla said, hey, might as well uh, combine them into one and have one thing that does it both. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Also, airplanes, for example, have, of course, fuel in their wings. And um, this is also a thing that, that that's how you store it. And that's also one of the reasons they get uh, got into that direction as well with, with examples like that, like how, how these kinds of technologies work. So, Brian, I wanted to ask you because the 4680 battery ramp <coughs> seems to be problematic, at least. Uh, we've talked about that briefly in the last episode about Lee and he tra from Tesla Economist and he tracks, uh, tracks everything and super furious about this. Uh, I mean, he had some points like it, it's slowed. It, it's not as easy as it was, but this is a new battery concept they are doing. It's difficult, right? And uh, yeah, what's your opinion on that? So I had a chance to talk. I, I got to attend a presentation uh, held mm -hmm. at a Tesla location for the Tesla Owners Club of Oregon, where Jen Gowdy talked. Jen Gowdy is a service center um, coordinator there and a former Cato Road battery uh, engineer. I was, she knew perfectly well who I was and to yeah, be yeah. very guarded with answers. And what I asked is, We've seen, since two, three years ago, announcements from virtually every manufacturer that they are going to begin working on the 4680 form factor. Yep. If you type in the name Panasonic or Samsung or mm -hmm. any of them, plus 4680, you'll see some announcement going back years yep. with very few exceptions. And I said, but we know as of like a month or two ago that at least Panasonic uh, at their Oklahoma location had stepped back a bit from the 4680 and was going to instead produce more 2170 cells. I said, is there something particularly vexing about this form factor, not specific to Tesla, but specific to these other companies that makes it inherently challenging? And she said, ah, I can't answer that either. That would, that would divulge mm -hmm. too much. How dare you? Good sir. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't get those answers, but what my take on it is the fact that you do have, if you were to unroll the roll from a 4680 versus any other battery, you'd find it has, it's probably, you know, like a little mini pizza size kind of length. It is quite long and quite wide, longer and wider than any of the other cells that it competes against. And if there's a problem anywhere on that surface, you can't use it. You have to throw it out. So I'm concerned that the greater surface area has led to a higher probability mm -hmm. of failure, which makes the equipment that much more difficult to configure, mm -hmm. dial in and get perfected. So and the yields results, are not as, yeah. 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 Could so either the yeah. yields are, are low or that just getting it so that the yields aren't low. No, the yields mm -hmm. are very good, but it took us forever to get it mm -hmm. sorted out. I think that's the potential problem there because that would make sense across all manufacturers. Yeah, and I think the concern that many people had in the beginning especially was that um, Tesla announced at battery day or, or that it's going to be also a structural element and stuff like this. And they, they talked about the 4680 specifically in this process of a structural battery pack. Now we have news like this, for example, or you can see that now they might already use blade batteries as a structural battery pack. 2170s as a structural battery pack. Wait a second. 
they can use every battery for a structural battery pack. So this is already off the table. They can do that. And yeah, what's your opinion on that? I, I'm super curious. So I don't see why they couldn't. Now with Blade, I think it might be more challenging because the mm -hmm. shape is different. It's not, it, they're not lined up in a yep. honeycomb shape. But 2170s, why couldn't you? And if that's the case, maybe we'll see a 2170 version of the Cybertruck as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe that becomes the single motor version. I don't see why they couldn't do that. I think that would be a perfectly reasonable solution. 2170s are smaller than 4680s, so it's not like they would run out of room to put them. So I don't know. I think that's a, a very strong possibility. Mm -hmm. And if somebody in the comments wants to tell us why yeah. couldn't you use different batteries in a structural battery? The 2170s, I don't think you could convince me would not be good enough uh, because they're so similar to the 4680. But other ones like blades or prism, prismatic or something else, uh, big old pouches. I don't <laughs> think you're going to make a structural pouch, but, uh, <laughs> you know, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious. Yeah. Absolutely. And Elon Musk, if you're in the comments again, uh, lurking around, please write, just answer the goddamn question with <laughs> all of your fake accounts. Come on, man. You're not fooling anyone. I know who you are. <laughs> no, but <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, I think it's an interesting topic because sometimes also like we had with the stainless steel before with the problematic there and yeah, people kind of tend to forget that Tesla is one of the be or, or the best engineers worldwide. The lists uh, they still top ranking in the lists of engineers that want to join there. They have ton uh, millions of applications in I don't know a week, so they are super attracting so much talent. It's ridiculous not to see that they can solve something like this. It takes longer. Maybe FSD, for example, is also a great example, prime example. When Elon Musk talks, for, especially for Europe, for example, if Elon Musk talks about, hey, we have uh, FSD, is, uh, 12 is around the corner. It is already released since December, by the way, guys. So you haven't heard. So no, it's still, it's still ongoing. And before we see something like this in Europe or a global rollout, it's a total different story because our roads are different. It has to be still trained. And uh, so it, those end to end things are also very difficult. It could take even years. Who cares? It will come eventually because the things we already saw are pretty impressive. And that's the move in the right direction. I've even did the yeah, sorry. I'll just, please, please oh, answer I was, it before. I was just I, going yeah. to, to throw in there that I've been <laughs> deeply skeptical of FSD beta, mm -hmm. but I am still very excited for version 12 because mm -hmm. it is different. And yep. some of the strengths of version 11 that we've seen in videos is that it was really configured with the streets where it was tested in mind, with that yep. city in mind, where version 12 is expected to be awfully good kind mm -hmm. of everywhere. And if my town goes from the experience I had on version 11 to a version 12 experience similar to what channels like whole Mars blog see, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be very impressed and very excited. Absolutely. So I think the approach that uh, it can take time, but uh, I think they're going to solve it. Also the uh, 2170 battery packs. So, so how, how bullish are you that they're going to uh, adjust it and uh, can get more yields. How disappointed were they actually? That's, that's also a question that I have. I, is it disappointing or not? So what's your take? My take is it's definitely disappointing. I think they were expecting yeah. to have, when they first announced, oh, we produced our millionth or 10 millionth cell from Cato Road. My take was, I was gutted. I thought, I thought for sure that they were far ahead of that by then. And then when they had their 20 millionth cell or whatever, they were it was a big, exciting announcement. And, you know, you just crunch the numbers. You divide it by 5,000. You realize that's not very many cars worth. We need, we need a lot more. We know that they wanted to get to a 4680 structural battery for the Model Y in Texas all along. They only made a handful of thousands of those, maybe 10,000, 20,000 at most, before discontinuing it and saying, no, we're going to save up these batteries and put them in the Cybertruck. Uh, so the plan was that those that Texas would be entirely self-sufficient with 4680s and that all of the 2170s made in Nevada could be used for the cars in Fremont and that would make it easier for more cars to qualify under the IRA. And the reason we're seeing some cars that don't is because the cells were not made in the U.S. because there just isn't enough capacity yet. So, so personally, yep. very disappointed. 
in that case also it makes like sense that they other suppliers like Panasonic st uh, steps in because uh, what does Tesla want? Like I've heard batteries from everybody in the best for uh, like those form factors of course that they use but still they want to order all the batteries they can get their hands on. Yeah, please continue making more batteries. We will buy them. If you have a good battery, we will buy it. And other companies have struggled with some of these manufacturers. I know LG had a problem with their batteries that went into <laughs> the Chevy Bolt, but LGs have been going into Tesla cars since 2019, no issue. And I think it's a disconnect between the engineers at LG and the and the engineers at Ford that caused the or GM that caused the problem. So we know that yeah, if if you're LG, we buy. BYD, we buy. Panasonic, of course. I'm not aware of any Samsung batteries being used in a Tesla yet, though I could be mistaken, but they will buy from anybody who has good batteries. And there is no shortage of suppliers, it seems, willing to allow that. And when you've got big companies saying, we're going to have all these cars in 2024, 25, and then they say, actually make it 25, 26, that frees up a lot of resources for these companies to say, Why were we working with these jokers in the first place? Call Tesla, see if they need some batteries, because we've got all this equipment and it's going to be idle because we reserved this capacity for a car that isn't coming out yet, if it ever does at all.